somebody asked me some time ago what my goals were, you know, as far as farming. I was hoping that our farm operation would be big enough that two families can make a living off the farm. And I think we're there, and if the boys want to go and expand it, well, that's going to be their project. We're members of Chesapeake Fields Farmers Cooperative. Um, we're growing some identity preserve grains for the co-op. Uh, right now we're growing some soybeans and uh, wheat and popcorn. We've kind of gone through a transition here on the farm. We used to be uh, have quite a few hogs. And when that turned out, the market's changed, and we started transitioning to other things, and we've gotten into the hay market and uh, grown some vegetables. And I think you have to um, be open-minded and constantly looking for new markets. We got into wine grapes for this, another market. I mean, it was another strong market. The grape, uh, the wine industry um, here in Maryland, um, they're required to buy, to, to sell Maryland wine, they're required to use Maryland grapes. And there's, this, there's a deficit in, in the um, production of Maryland grapes. And the market was already established, and we thought it was an opportunity for us to, to step into that market. And uh, so right now, we're, we're plugging along at it. We've been in for five years now. Wine grapes are very labor-intensive, much more than any of the other crops that we grow. Um, and that was a mindset that we learned pretty fast that, it was different than the mechanical mechanization that we utilize for all the other crops that we're growing. Um, and we, we, it required hiring some additional labor that we didn't already have on the farm. We learned that the first couple of years when we, we needed extra help, right. and we, we did that. But I think having gone into the vegetables first helped us understand at least the disease control protocols that you need in a, a crop like grapes, uh, them having done potatoes and then tomatoes and green beans at least helped us understand the different diseases that we don't see in the grains that we do see in the fruits and vegetables. Farming is a constant learning experience. Our grandfather was good steward. He passed that he passed that knowledge down to my dad and uncle, and then dad passed that on to Alan and myself, and we hope that down the road that we're going to be able to pass that same knowledge down to our children. And uh, we think if we're good stewards of the land, that the land's going to be productive. It's going to be more productive by using some of the best management practices that are out there. Um, and, you know, we've gained a lot of knowledge from um, university, you know, some of the research that they've done, and we're utilizing those practices on the farm. So, we, we, you know, we're trying to do our best to, for to stay in production agriculture and, and be environmentally sensitive at the same time. We were actually one of the first ones that went into no-till farms. Um, we started no-till farming back in 1971. And uh, interesting thing, we, the first, we kind of, we have five, eight, five miles from here, we have a farm used to be in the old soil bank and there's a lot of uh, rushing stuff come up. So we rigged this no-till planter up, my father went out there after the other help quit working that day we planted these five acres back there and when, as we finished my father said boy I'm sure glad we planted it back here so the neighbors don't see it all. I think agriculture has a has a really bright future um, and I think there's a bright future for young farmers out there if they want to you know stay on the farm. We're all quite honored to be be recipients of this award when you look across this state and you see all the diversity in this in the state and all the farmers who, who, who are out there, you know, it's quite an honor to be recognized for this award. And 